All right, so this video is to Ngozi Amania, who lives in Ogba Egbema Rivers, Port Harcourt. The last time you saw your son, he was taken away from you about 12 years ago and is now in prison for 12 years now, going to 13 years. Now, you visited him about eight years ago and he said the reason why he stopped you from coming was because he was scared of uh, maybe something happening to you because they hear stories of maybe a parent coming to visit your child in the prison and then they lost their life due to accident. So I said the reason why I stopped you was because he didn't want anything bad to happen to you because you are the most meaningful person to him. He thinks about you and he has strength to stay. Um, I know it's been long that you saw your son, but these are his recent pictures. Um, this was when he got his BSc in the Open University from the prison. He studies from the prison. And by the grace of God, this is a picture with him and the current uh, Minister of Interiors, Baba Tunde Ojo. Um, on, they are planning on the launching of his book. So in prison, your son has written this. Um, the moon was out of sight for a decade. He has also written this. He wrote this. Catalyst of self-development. He also wrote this crime scene, and he also and this is the one that we're about to launch in the prison. Before I say the story of Chiwendu Hart, who is your son, I just want to let you know that on the book launch, I will book you a flight um, to come to Abuja to see him, so that you will not have to go through the road when accidents go happen. <laughs> Mama, don't worry. So um, you come to Abuja, I'll get you a hotel, and I'll book you a flight to and fro. So, um, yeah, that one is settled. So, um, for people that don't know who Chiwendu is, I'll just give you a short story about Chiwendu. 2010, Chiwendu set out to do um, DJing. He said he wanted to be a DJ and he didn't have money. So his mother contacted Mike Okiro, who was the former Inspector General and the Inspector General of that time, because she knew him and she said, my son wants to learn DJing, he didn't have money. Michael Kiro said, come to my house. He gave the boy 500,000 Naira as of 2010 so that um, Chiwendu Hart would learn DJing. Chiwendu Hart said, he started learning DJing and then he was so good that they called him to come and play in a club. Now, when he got to this club, it was like a very night, nice, nice nightlife club and a garden. So it was a woman that owned, that, that employed him. So they were paying him 5,000 Naira every weekend so um then the owner of the garden now saw the progress of what that um, garden life was bringing they now decided to chase the woman away it was now remaining um chiwendu so the owner of the garden said um chiwendu was not going to go anywhere with his own equipment that the woman was still owing them money so um that chiwendu cannot go anywhere with his properties so Chiwendu was forced to work for these people. So while he was working for them, he got tired and he planned with somebody that they were going to steal money from um, the people that owned the garden. So that night, he planned it with one of his friends. They stole a lot of money from the safe. When they broke the safe, they stole some money and then he gave it to his friend to run away so that him will stay. It will not look as if it was somebody else that did it. So he stayed, that his friend and took the money and ran away. So later he went out to look for his friend, that his friend had relocated with all the money that he stole. So Chiwendu said he came back to the place, since nobody suspected him, he continued. Then he planned that he was going to carry his DJing equipment, his laptop and everything, and he was going to run away. Now, that day came, he stole both the guarding people, he stole their own equipment and he carried his own and he ran away. So when he ran away, they looked for him, they didn't see him. So he got out all the money, then he came to Abuja. He said when he came to Abuja, the money he sold it for, he sold everything for peanuts, but he came with his laptop. So when he came with his laptop, he started going around, telling people that I'm a DJ, I need job, but there was no job. So um, one day, 2010, he went to 2011, um, which was the next year, he went to... Um, Pepsi Mall, if you know Pepsi Mall, around uh, Musi Market Zone 5. Close to Pepsi Mall, there was a car wash. So he stayed there and he said there was a DJ inside Pepsi Mall then. I was waiting for him. 
Then somebody washed car and paid the Yabuki guy. I think he said 300 naira. He was like, ah, I want to wash 300. He spoke to the Yabuki and told him he didn't have anywhere to stay. The Yabuki man said, okay, no wala. Come, I will take you in. You know, took him in. Chiwendu said he started making a lot of money until one day um, a woman came. And by this time, his laptop had spoiled. So he said, okay, this money I'm making, I'll use it to get a good laptop because the person he was waiting for, the DJ he was waiting for in FFC more said, I can only help you if you have your own laptop. So he was saving money to buy a laptop and he was making a lot of money from doing car wash. So this particular day, woman drove in and after washing the woman's car, he drove the car out and went to go and park it outside. So after parking, in, parking the car outside, the woman said, oh, you can drive. She went and said, yes, I can drive. The woman said, okay, um, I have accommodation. I can employ you to be my driver so you don't have to be washing car. So Chiwendu said, okay, no problem. I would um, start very soon. But I'll let you know when I will start. The woman said, no problem. So Chiwendu saw that I was making money from that thing. Then he called his cousin to come to Abuja and stay in that car wash while he goes to work with this woman. So his cousin came. He said, when he went to the woman's place, the first day, the woman told him that, oh, tomorrow I want to move from this place to the next place. So you come and help me move things from this place to my next apartment that I'm moving into. He said when he carried the woman's car, they were just coming outside, him and the woman. Another car just hit the car. When he hit the car, the woman came down and said, hey, Chiwendu, you are a witch that she sent to come and buy me. You are a witch. Chiwendu was like, ah, madam, I just started today. You can see that they just came around. The woman said, God forbid, this one, that one, that one. At the end of the day, they moved the car by the side. They went back to the compound. The woman carried a second car and they packed all the things. They moved it there. They called Panabita to carry that car. Then they started moving the load to the next place. So when he moved to that place, the woman gave him BQ. Gave him the BQ. He said the first day he got to the house, the people that were painting, they started lamenting and they were quarreling. That this your madam, a very, very nice, a very wicked woman. She don't go be give person money on time. They were all complaining. We go paint this one today. She go say no be this color. We go paint this one. And she know they appreciate it. She go just shout on people, you know. So Chiwendu said, ah, that they should just be it. Because they were thinking Chiwendu was her son. Because the woman was elderly, right? So Chiwendu said, okay. They were going back and forth. The woman was insulting. The woman would say a lot of things. She wasn't a nice woman, according to him. Said so one day, um, one day the woman now is monthly work now. Um, so it's now month end for the woman to pay. You understand? Now I am rushing this because I actually want you guys to buy the book and read. So I'll rush it. The whole story is here. So he said, um, it was month end. So it was time for the woman to pay. The woman refused to pay him. I said she does not like the way he was working and that she's not going to pay. Cut the long story short, the woman refused to pay Chiwendu his money. Chiwendu now planned that him and his cousin, they were going to hold the woman down and collect money from her and they would run away. So him and his cousin, they held the woman by the hand. They tied her up, you understand? So when they tied the woman up, the woman was struggling with them, but the woman was elderly and she senior them. As at this time, Chiwendu was 22 years old. So they held the woman down. The woman pushed his cousin and beat his hand. When the woman beat his hand, the cousin Chiwendu was shouting. The cousin now pushed the woman. The woman just hit her head on the wall. And that was it. They tapped the woman. The woman did not wake up. They tried everything. She didn't wake up. They knew she had bye. They entered the car. One of her car, they drove to Uweri. It was in a way the police now came and caught, traced the car and caught them. So by the time they got to Abuja, uh, police have already arrested about 12 people that were in the compound. So Chiwendu said, he now told the policemen that, see you, it is me that did it. Please let all these people go. I did not do it deliberately. It was because the woman was bad to me. That was why. I said I wanted to tie her up, carry some money and run away. That was my plan. But the woman was stronger than us. She overpowered us. And then we pushed her. She hit her head and that was it. 
you know. So they now released everybody and held Chiwendo. Chiwendo and his cousin, they got to court. When they got to court, the, the woman's family were very serious with the case. They got to court and they told um, the judge that they were guilty. The judge said, mm -mm. we'll review the case, let it not be like somebody else is forcing you people to say this, to take the fall. Now, uh, um, this case have been adjourning, going on, going on. And now, this is the 13th year Chiwendo is still there. Now, for the progress Chiwendo have made for himself, I'm really proud of him. He's now a graduate in the prison, he went to school, which is why how he was able to write these four books, you understand. And while in prison, something happened. If you remember the time that Koje prison was broken, when they say prisoners escape, Boko Haram were the ones that actually did it. So they gave me, Chiwendo gave me the whole story and other prisoners that were with us the day he gave me the story. Chiwendo said, 30 minutes before Boko Haram got to the prison gates, they were shooting from Koje Junction and they were coming. So before they got to the prison, everybody don't escape. Even all the, all the prison wardens, they don't run. You understand? Boko Haram put bomb, boom. They blasted the whole place. When they blasted the whole place, um, they brought out all the prisoners and told them to sit down. When they told them to sit down, Boko Haram started preaching to them. After preaching to them, Boko Haram said they carried bags of money. He said they were there for like an hour. Boko Haram, front of the prison, sat all the prisoners down and said, after preaching to them, told them that it is Allah that sent them to come and release them, that they are not here to buy anybody, they are not here to do anything, they just want to rescue people. They now said, if you want to join Boko Haram, come to this side. If you don't want to join Boko Haram, sit down. Some people went to join Boko Haram while others sat down. So Boko Haram started sharing 5,000, 2,000, 3,000 to the people that want to run and find their way. So Chiwendu said, um, they came, he sat down, but he refused to go anywhere. Do you understand? Like I said, the whole story is here. He refused to go anywhere because he felt like, I am now a changed person. I'm not going to run until I am done with the police and I'm done with the sentence. I don't want to run again. I'm now a changed person. You understand? So now, the reason for this video is two things. This book launch is coming soon. That's one. Number two, Chiwendo have spent... 13 years, this is the 13th year now in Kuje prison. As a matter of fact, his IPO for the case then, his prosecutor for the case, is now a police um, um, a police service chairman or something like that. I can't remember what he is. But the um, judge of his case is now the chief judge of FCT, according to what he told me. So we are hoping that something good might come out of this why because the family of the woman that actually by said they want to withdraw the case that they forgiven you and do knowing fully well after years i think after like five years they said they don't want to do the case anymore they're forgiving him knowing fully well that it was a mistake and then all those things happen you know so now it is left in the hands of the commissioner of police to withdraw the case you understand commission of police need to withdraw the case because the family of the woman tried to withdraw the case but they couldn't they couldn't because the case have now moved to the from the family and to the hands of the government so it's only the commission of police that can withdraw the case so um that is the short story of chiwendu but please i think this is available on the play store uh the moon was out of sight for a decade chiwendu is still in prison i will try my best to go and see the commissioner of police of um, FCT, which is um, commissioner of police Igwe. So, in respect of this, and I pray and I hope something will be done and the case will be reviewed. Because 12 years long, it's just to beg them, not to beg, say, I beg, please, you guys should review this case again. So, that's the story of Chiwendo. Peace and love. So, Mama, prepare yourself. Thank you.